Hello, uh, my name is Rebecca Stevens, um, and today we're going to be going over a presentation called Before Help Arrives, How to Survive an Active Shooter Event. Um, and before we get into it, I just want to tell you a few things about me. Um, I've worked as an EMT for a little over a year, um, and currently I'm a senior at UNT. Um, and I'm working on my bachelor's degree um, in risk management and emergency management. All right, so the first uh, topic that we're going to go over is why active shooter training is important. And to kind of illustrate this point, um, we're going to watch uh, the short video. Um, before I started, I do wanna warn you that we are covering a sensitive topic. Um, and so this video might be a little hard to watch. This year, my mom got me the perfect bag for back to school. These colorful binders help me stay organized. These headphones are just what I need for studying. These new sneakers are just what I need for the new year. This jacket is a real must-have. My parents got me the skateboard I wanted. It's pretty cool. These scissors really come in handy in art class. These colored pencils, too. These new socks? They can be a real lifesaver. I finally got my own phone to stay in touch with my mom. All right, so that video kind of illustrates the more emotional uh, reasons as to why uh, this kind of training is really important. Um, and next we're going to talk about uh, the study that the FBI did on, um, F on active shooter events um, from 2000 to 2018. And so in these 18 years, there were 277 active shooter events um, and these events caused 2,430 casualties, um, but this number does not include uh, the active shooters themselves. Um, and of these casualties, 884 were killed and 1,546 were injured. <clears throat> and this graph is showing uh, the locations of active shooter events, um, again, from 2000 to 2018. Um, and you can see that the majority is uh, places of business um, with 43.7%. Um, and then uh, close second is uh, places of education and then open spaces. And this graph is showing uh, the just actual number of events per year um, and in this bar graph. And you can see that from year to year, it kind of goes you know, up and down up and down, but if you draw a straight line through all of the data, you can definitely tell that the trend is definitely uh, increasing um, as the years go on. Um, and because of this, um, it's becoming more and more important to have active shooter training and know what to do in these situations uh, because they're becoming more and more common each year. All right, and here is your training. Um, these are the steps that you need to take in an active shooter situation. And uh, these three things are all you have to remember. So it's gonna be run, hide, and fight. And we're gonna go over the details of each of these steps in the next three slides. All right, so your first step is run, and this is going to be your number one priority. Uh, you do not, want to try and hide as your first resort, you want to run. Um, so you want to get away from the shooter, leave any belongings behind, uh, don't stay to grab your phone or your purse, just leave. Uh, and try to get others to escape with you, but if they argue with you, you can't stay and argue. Your number one priority is to get out. Um, and as you're running out, 
if there's people coming in, you can warn them as you're leaving um, about the situation and try and get them to leave with you. And once you get to a safe location, uh, then you can call 911 and give a description of the shooter location and what weapons uh, they're using. Your next step is to hide. Um, if, and that's only if you can't escape. So remember that running and escaping is your number one first choice, your number one priority. Um, and when you, so when you hide, uh, the point is to get out of the view and try to protect yourself as much as possible. Um, and you also need to stay very, very quiet. This means silencing your phones and any electronic devices that you have, um, make sure they don't even vibrate because even that makes sound. Uh, lock any doors that you can, um, turn off the lights, make it dark, harder to find you. Um, also try not to hide in groups, try to spread out because um, that makes it harder for the shooter to find you. Um, you can also use options like texting or social media to contact uh, police departments. Nowadays, there's a lot of departments that uh, allow you to text 911 um, if there's an emergency. Um, you can also tag um, the police department, like your local police, uh, in a tweet or a Facebook post um, that they can see and then uh, respond to the event. Um, and you don't, if you hide, you do not want to leave that hiding space um, until law enforcement comes and gives you the all clear. And then should the shooter find you, uh, your last, absolute last resort is to fight them. Um, and so when, you're, when you fight, you have to commit um, and be as aggressive as you can. Uh, try to recruit others to help you. Uh, makeshift weapons like chairs, fire extinguishers, scissors, books, whatever you can get your hands on. Um, and be prepared to do whatever is necessary to stop that shooter. All right, so now we're going to do a bit of a case study um, with this training um, and talk about a semi-recent event that happened here in the United States. So we're gonna talk about the 2017 uh, Las Vegas shooting. Um, it was at something called the Route 91 Harvest Festival. This was a three-day uh, country music event. Um, this was in an outdoor space. It looks like it was in like a parking lot, um, about 15 acres, and had festival seating and a stage. There were about 22,000 people there, um, which sounds like a lot, but uh, by large or by Las Vegas standards, uh, this was not considered a large-scale event. Um, but it was stopped with, you know, security and first aid, like most events are. So the shooting happened um, on October 1st at 10.05. Uh, shots were fired into the crowd of the attendees. Um, more than a thousand shots were fired over the course of 15 minutes, uh, which means that the shooter most likely used an automatic weapon. Um, and the shooter was actually on the 32nd floor of the Mandalay Bay Resort, um, not on the ground with the people. Um, people who attended the concert thought that the sound was firecrackers because you know, they were at a concert and that's the most logical step in your thinking. But when they saw that people were being hurt, uh, they began to run. And when the crowd ran, they actually overtook every exit and there was a big bottleneck effect that happened. Um, but when they ran, they also ran into hotels, churches, convenience stores, airports, um, anywhere that was nearby that had shelter, um, which in that caused this incident, instead of being contained in the 15 acres of the venue, then that spread out to more than four square miles. Because um, even people who were injured ran and got away. <clears throat> And so that made it harder for first responders to actually get to them because they were going just to the location of the shooting. Um, but what ended up happening is that most people found their own transportation to hospitals instead of waiting for uh, first responders to get there. And so here is a model of uh, where the shooter was and where the festival was. And so you can see here is the Mandalay Bay Hotel. 
and this is the window that the shooter broke open and was shooting into the crowd with. And so he was here and all of these people were in this parking lot for this festival. And we're gonna watch another, uh, this is a news clip um, about after the shooting happened. John Blackstone is near the scene just south of the famous Las Vegas Strip. John, good morning. Good morning. Well, police say they found in the Mandalay Bay Hotel back here, that room was filled with weapons, as, as many as 10 weapons in the room that uh, this gunman was using to shoot down into the crowd that was gathered for this concert on the other side of the Las Vegas Strip. Now, cell phone video is helping investigators put together exactly what happened. Uh, many of the people gathered there say it was the scariest time of their life. Initially, many thought the pops they heard uh, were fireworks associated with the show, but soon it became obvious that this was an attack. What sounded like automatic gunfire rang out late Sunday night. The bullets spraying into a crowd of roughly 22,000 concert goers on the Las Vegas Strip. These videos captured the chaos unfolding on the ground. There was confusion about where the bullets were coming from, or even if they were bullets. Some were frozen in panic. Others fled for their lives. And all of a sudden we heard pop, 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 countless of times. And we all thought it was firecrackers. And then it kept on going, and then he quiet for a bit, then he fired another 15, 20 rounds, and that's when he realized it was a fully automatic. Police say the gunshots came from above. There was an active shooter that was firing rounds from the 32nd floor. And we are um, still going through the uh, search warrant actively at this time, um, but it's in excess of 10 rifles. The suspect is now dead, and authorities are still trying to piece together the scope of the carnage. Right now, we need your truck. We just need to get people over to the hospital, okay? Okay. The injured were scattered all along the Las Vegas Strip. Bystanders tried to get those hit by gunfire to the hospital any way they could. Some were falling and some were screaming and yelling and running. So everyone was just like literally laying on top of each other trying to get out of the way. It was a terrible night here in Las Vegas. And as the sun comes up here this morning, uh, we're bracing for even worse with more than 400 people in the hospital, many of them in critical condition. The sheriff has warned that the death toll could well rise above 50. Jeff? All right, so um, these are some questions that I wanna go over after watching that video. Um, and I wanted to talk about some of uh, the interesting things that I noticed in the video. Um, the biggest thing that stood out to me is that people were ducking and kind of sheltering where they were instead of running as their first response. Um, and I think this might have been because they couldn't tell where the, sh the, the shots were coming from. They didn't know which direction to run in. Um, but like I said before, when they noticed that people started getting hurt, they ran. Um, and when they did this spreading out, they actually caused a lot of problems for the first responders, um, and it made it really hard for EMTs to find the patients uh, that were hurt and then left the scene. Um, and this also creates something called echo calls, which means that they thought the shootings were happening in other locations because all of these injured people started showing up at casinos, and they thought that there was a shooter at the casino because these injured people were there instead. Um, and I just want you as the audience to kind of think about your answers to these last two questions. Um, what aspects of run, hide, fight did you see? Um, and what you would have done in this situation? All right, and to sum up this presentation, uh, what I really want you guys to remember is that the number of active shooter events is on the rise. Um, so it's very important to be prepared. Um, and how to respond to an active shooter event is run, hide, fight. So run if you can, hide if you can't run, and fight if you can't hide, but only as a last resort. And I also want you to remember the uh, 2017 Las Vegas shooting and think about um, what you noticed in that video of people 
following the run hide fight uh, scenario. And here are the sources that I used for this presentation. Um, I hope that you learned something new um, and I hope that you feel uh, more prepared for a situation like this.